Silly question to start here. If you two were vampires defined by your favorite hobby, what type of vampire would you be? It would be a like a chip eating vampire because I just love eating chips. That's probably like my hobby. I'm, I'm like a junk food eater. So it would be a junk food eating vampire, which would be like honestly amazing. If I didn't have to feed off blood and I just had to feed off like fast food and chips. <laughs> Yeah, me too. That would be easy. There's some sort of epic spinoff where it is <laughs> yeah. a chip-eating vampire. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I, I would probably, on the food side of it, would definitely be noodles. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, I definitely would be noodles. A noodle eating. A curry, curry-flavored noodles. It's important okay. to make that distinction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we've got curry-flavored noodles, we've got chips, I'll be a peanut butter vampire, whatever that means. <laughs> we should make a, a little sitcom about okay. these vampires. This, this would have to be a sitcom and not yeah. a horror movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alicia, specific questions for you now, because this is your first big lead role in a very, very bloody horror movie. So going into it, what would you say surprised you most about what it takes to make a movie like this? I think what surprised me the most was, I mean, the obvious one was how much blood there was. I mean, reading the script, you don't know how much blood there's going to be because it doesn't tell you on the script. So getting to be on the sets, I think the sets definitely surprised me too. Um, you know, everything, even in the big house that you see at the start, it was all set, like the decorations and everything. Everything was so detailed, and I, it was amazing to see that. But I think the main one would be how much blood there was. There was just, it was just getting more and more and more and Honestly, I was just so used to it at the end. It was it was everywhere, and I, I didn't even mind it at the end. That doesn't surprise you anymore no. with Ben Tyler. No. <laughs> yeah. What advice would you give to another actor about to jump into their first horror movie with this much blood and gore? I would say just have fun. I mean, don't... Like, it's going to get everywhere. The blood's going to get everywhere, so you honestly just have to let it... Just let it be. It's going to get there anyways, so don't try to rub it off in between takes because it's just going to get loaded back on you. So just embrace the blood, honestly, because it's going to get everywhere anyways. You learned a little something from this one, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> All I keep thinking about is, like, yeah. putting a towel on and how that would creep me out if there were oh, blood on yeah. me. Oh, the yeah. The oh, there was a lot yeah. of peeling towels yeah. off of ourselves. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah that, that part I can't handle. Question for both of you. I love asking this question. What would you say is maybe the most memorable thing the other did for you as a scene partner? Maybe even something that helped you crush a really tough scene that you might not have been able to without them? Ooh. I know. I Ooh. think it was, I, I remember it was the first, it was the first scene where you see Abigail, you know, show her teeth and transform. And I had to do this like on the bed and I had to go like this, but the bed was so wobbly and I didn't want to say like, and nobody really realized, nobody realized that like I was like wobbling all over the place and every take I was so nervous that I'd like fall off the bed or something. And the only person who knew that something was wrong was Melissa. And she just knew that I, I like, it, the bed was so wobbly. So she asked if I could get a board to go under it so I could have the, you know, Know, the strength to stay up on that so I wasn't wobbling all over the place and I remember I texted her after just saying thank you for you know helping me out because I probably wouldn't have been able to do it. Producer brain kicking in I like that. Yeah, I could see I could tell like I know the balance is hard and I could tell that she what she had to do she had to do like a full cambray she had to go like back and like on a soft bed I was like there's no way like mm -hmm. and 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 I think it was because we weren't like shooting you maybe that no one was like mm -hmm. whatever. And yeah. I was like, no, she needs a hard surface to stand on so that she can like actually do this properly. Um, so yeah, I love got that. that. We got that done. Looking out, I yeah. like it. All right, now same thing for you with Alicia. She, Alicia is just so incredible because she is giving you all of herself the entire time. And I remember for that I mean it happened in so many scenes but it was just so easy to connect with her like she would just like be looking I almost felt like she was looking like in me the entire time <laughs> um and in this is like a little bit of a spoiler but in the end we're saving this for after okay, our great. conversation is running before release so okay. we can talk about whatever we want now <laughs> okay um so in the final scene like once Joey's like okay I'm gonna leave we have this little beat where where she says like you know you just have to show up for your son and the way that she said it like made me just the way that she was looking at me and and it just like made me get to where I needed to get and every time I would just 
choke up completely just by like the way that she was delivering that line to me and it felt also I think it was like the last day of shooting too so it was also us being like this is one of our last scenes together but it was just so beautiful because she's such a she's such a generous scene partner mm -hmm. like it's really incredible to work with her. such good qualities to have yeah. hold tight I know you will but hold tight to those <laughs> just because you brought up the ending I'll lean into a little bit of a theory question because she does say to Joey like I'll see you around do you think they'll ever cross paths again? And if so, what might that look like? I think they will. Yeah. 100%. I mean, honestly, like, my dream is that <laughs> Joey gets home and she turns into a vampire. And so she then comes back and is like, you lied to me, Abigail. You told me I was going to be fine. And then they have to, like, you know, fight some other, you know, vampire clan together. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Sign, I mean, this is the sequel I want. Sign me up for this. I love that. Um, Alicia, I'm a little obsessed with, with backstory. I'm not sure how much you worked on this with Matt and Tyler, but did you ever discuss, you know, maybe what she was like before she turned or what some of her previous kill nights were like? 100%. I mean, that definitely, talking about that and talking about her past and her, I mean, y you find out so much about, there's so much to unfold about Abigail's history and with her father. And I mean, you know, she seems like this crazy, awful person who's br brought people here, but you know, there's always a different side that you don't see in that vulnerability to Abigail and you find out so much about her past with her father and how that was like and, you know, really focusing in on that to help me get into the character really helped me and, yeah, definitely finding out more about her past really helped. I, I feel like I would watch so many prequels about all of her kill nights before. Um, I wanted to save this question for talking about heavy spoilers so you can answer with any scene you want, but I love talking about how scenes can evolve on the spot. So which scene for each of you would you say changed the most from script to screen based on what you found in the moment? Good question. Mm. I was constantly surprised. Like to me, when I read the script, I was sure that the movie was going to be like a certain type of movie like a more serious movie. And then when I got to set and I saw how funny everyone was, I was like, oh, okay, this is the movie we're making. So every single scene, I was surprised by what my, my, what do you say, peers, colleagues? Co-stars. Co-stars? Yeah. Co-stars. <laughs> what my co-stars were bringing to it. I was just like in awe of how creative they were getting. And I think that's what, that's, that's what makes someone great. Because I feel like there's, any actor can read a scene and just read it. But like it's the the great actors that are bringing something different and cool and unexpected. And that was a consistent like Alicia was doing that, Dan was doing that, Catherine was doing that, um, Kevin, Will, Angus, everyone. I was like I had no idea these were going to be the characters. No idea. And so it was just thrilling to to be a part of a movie like that with such a stellar cast. Spot on description. I yeah. feel like I look at every single character in this movie and I can confidently say you all made it uniquely your own. You. I could sit here all day, I'm not allowed, I'm getting the love. <laughs> Congratulations, thank you. Thank, thank you again. You.